everyone, welcome back to the SDG Pavilion here at COP25 in Madrid. Today we are talking about the connection between SDG 7 and clean cooking as it relates to climate change, carbon emissions, and everything that everybody is talking about here at COP25. So I have two guests today. I have Divna Vanderlands, CEO of the Clean Cooking Alliance, and I have Sheila Okra Ocha, uh, International Coordinator and Program Manager at Energy and co-chair of the SDG7 Technical Advisory Group. So thank you for being here, ladies. Wonderful to be here. Yes, and I would start off by asking you, Sheila, first, can you sort of tell us a little bit about clean cooking, as why it's a problem, and how it relates to carbon emissions? Well, actually, I think I want to hand that over to Dufna. Dufna's with the Clean Cooking Alliance, and the Clean Cooking Alliance is arguably the the organization that has really put clean cooking uh, on the agenda for since 2010, did it not? It's really started. So, yes. shall I hand over to you? And now, wonderful. Yeah, so clean cooking is one of those global development issues that is so very often overlooked. Um, a lot of attention has been paid to making sure that people have access to renewable energy for electricity, which is incredibly important and very much needed. However, what we feel strongly is lacking right now is an equal amount of attention and finance to go into making sure that uh, women and their families across the world have access to deep cooking solutions. This is important for various reasons. It's important because it directly impacts our health. And so indoor air pollution has a significant contribution to premature deaths across the world. And this is really quite unacceptable. It not only impacts the health of the woman, who very often is the main but also the impact, or it also impacts the health of her children. And so to me, that as a mother, that is just an unacceptable fact that we are still allowing pretty much half of the population to not have access to clean cooking solutions because of this immediate health impact that it has. Making sure people across the world have access to clean cooking solutions also significantly impacts climate change. It really is a significant contributor if you want to reach our SDG 7 goals. Um, and so we, with the Clean Cooking Alliance, and many of our wonderful partners, make sure that there's increased ambition around making sure that we collectively achieve universal access to clean cooking by 2030. Because of these impacts on health, because of impacts on climate, because of impacts on the environment, and because of impacts on gender and gender equality. So maybe I'll just build on from what Dufla says. Coming from Energia, it's an international network that is working on gender and energy issues for the past uh, 20 years. And Dufla, uh, you talked about uh, its impact on our health. And indeed, if you're not healthy, you cannot work. So uh, the time and the time when women are, are ill and are sick, then they cannot earn an income. And from the continent that I come from, having to earn an income and provide for your families. It's also responsible for women, so that's really, that's really important. And also, let's not forget how much time yes. it takes for them to actually collect the fuel wood. So if you're going to spend four or five hours of your day just collecting fuel wood, how much time do you actually have to invest in other things, even to rest, to commune, to earn an income, but even to learn and to educate yourself? You know? Yeah, and on top of that, very often what we've seen is that when the women and their children um, have to go out to collect their woods, and, and firewood for um, their cooking purposes, they indeed spend several hours, up to six hours a day to, to collect that wood. They're then also exposed to gender-based violence. And so that is another thing that I just find heartbreaking, that not only do they not have access to clean cooking solutions, when they go out, there's an increased potential of gender-based violence. Um, we also see that a lot in humanitarian settings um, as well. And so to address this issue also would significantly impact the health of women, not just for indoor air pollution, but just their general well-being. And just to turn it over, so we've talked about the issues and the problems, and let's talk about the, uh, the positive side and the supply side. And if I think work that you have done, but also work that uh, Energia has done, is, has shown that when women are really engaged in uh, disseminating cooking energy, cooking energy solutions, that the uptake is far greater. Uh, uptake adoption is hard later. I think one of the studies you had is that they were out selling men three to one. So normally these are businesses run by uh, men, but actually when we have interventions that really strengthens women's role uh, in, uh, in uh, cooking energy businesses, it even has a greater impact on just scaling up to cooking energy. Yeah. yeah, no, absolutely. And what we've seen is that if we really truly want to address this issue at the scale that's required, 
women have to be part of every single part of the solution. Everywhere across the supply chain, they have to be a big part of it. So whether or not it's more female engineers who actually design and think about the end users or they design the products that the consumers, the women, actually will want to use. Um, whether or not they're part of a leadership team in some of these businesses, whether or not they're part of the sales team to actually go out into the communities and make sure there's increased awareness, whether or not they're health workers. One of the projects we've done in the poll, we really work very closely with the female um, health workers in the communities who are really trusted voices and ambassadors of um, the impacts that making sure that companies have access to clean cooking solutions is actually heard. And so working with the female um, health workers was an incredibly important um, step for us to reach a broader audience, but also to have that message we really trusted, which is very important. And as you know, you mentioned that I'm actually the co-chair of the uh, SDG 7, so Sustainable Development Goal 7 Technical Advisory Group, which is convened by UNDESA to uh, support the review of programs on the SDG 7. Uh, at, um, um, in relation to the high level political, to form the high level political process. And that's one of the reasons that I became co facilitator. And I think Nicola, that's one of the reasons that you joined. Because we want this, when we're thinking about new solutions and how we're going to really scale up team cooking, it has to have a female voice. It has to have a female narrative. It has to have a narrative that's aspirational for women. Yeah, and so recently at the Clean Cooking Forum that we hosted in Nairobi, um, Kenya a couple of weeks ago, I had decided several months back that the closing plenary was going to be women only. Um, and I think that sends a really powerful message to the 500 people who were in attendance and who were all there for the closing plenary to hear voices of female political leadership, to hear voices of female leaders in the NGO sector, to listen to some of the inspiring and emerging entrepreneurs, female entrepreneurs that are now in this sector, to listen to um, a representative from the Ministry of Kenya. Who um, her name is Phoebe, who's doing amazing work to make sure that gender is embedded in all of the policy developments within the government of Kenya. And so it was really, from my perspective, very motivating to see so many wonderfully strong voices, female voices, at a closing plenary um, that traditionally may have had more, more different diversity on the closing plenary. And let's not forget our strongest ambassador, the second lady of Ghana. Yes. And I would thank both of you for really drawing on many different SDGs here. We have behind us, we've talked about good health, goal three, uh, SDG seven on energy, and of course, SDG five on gender equality. And I'm hoping you guys can tell us some specific, maybe country level examples of good work going on in the clean cooking space. Sure, so we see um, a lot of really um, encouraging trends emerging. Um, and I think maybe to highlight some of them, uh, where again in Kenya we see a lot of really true entrepreneurial spirit. Um, there are some really good enterprises that are emerging um, in Kenya and I think that's specifically relevant because the impact of their ability to actually reach such a broad um, uh, segment is really significant in Kenya and I think proving out those business models, proving out those approaches is incredibly important to the sector um, because we know that, that replication happens when things are proven companies are able to attract more financing to grow their businesses, there's the potential for them to scale that in other parts of Africa. Um, that I think is a really inspiring uh, and wonderful example of how an entrepreneurial spirit can really move the sector, the sector forward. And so that I would like to go to the, uh, to the grassroots level. So work that we're doing with the uh, counties, so these are local government authorities in Kenya and in Nepal, to uh, integrate clean cooking in their energy agenda. There's been, as you know, a lot of our governments uh, are uh, devolving, so that the responsibility for planning and budgeting for energy is taking place at the local level. Local level is wonderful because it's much closer to our, uh, to be, to our final consumers and our target group. So, uh, but a lot of local governments don't necessarily have the capacity or understanding as to different solutions very open to it and uh, so that's something that we engage in, we engage in with local government. And even taking a step forward, a step further about integrations, we're also working in Nepal with female health workers. And this is uh, one thing that struck us is that it's all it's also all about understanding and behavioral change. Yeah? That's something that we know. You know are changing your cooking habits. And um, we looked around and said, you know the health sector is very good, under five clinics 
uh, is very good in running such behavioral change programs. So how can we tap into already established um, um, vehicles for doing that? And female health workers that work with mother groups, that work with women, to include in their messages and in their protocols and when they're engaging with women, including clean cooking has really been, uh, has been very, well, it's, you know, it's new for us, because we haven't gone to that level, but it's uh, having exciting results as well. Wonderful. And for our Facebook audience out there, what are some ways they can get involved or show support for clean cooking initiatives? So talk about your campaign. Great. Yeah, thank you for asking that question. Um, so at the um, Clean Cooking Forum in uh, Nairobi a couple of weeks ago that we hosted together with the government of Kenya, we launched a new campaign, which is very exciting. It's called Clean Cooking Is, hashtag Clean Cooking Is. Um, and with that, we really encourage everybody, our partners, uh, the governments that we work with, but really also broader audiences to educate themselves, to become aware of how important this issue is, to understand better the impacts it has and how critically important it will be to address clean cook or make sure people have access to clean cooking solutions by 2030 if we want to reach all of the other um, SDG goals. So this deeper awareness and a deeper understanding and appreciation just of how important this is. Um, we want to reach a wider audience, which is why we launched the Clean Cooking Is campaign. Uh, people can record their own video that says Clean Cooking Is and then they finish that sentence and download it to um, a dedicated website at cleancooking.is. Um, so we strongly encourage everybody to go there and share what, from their perspective why clean cooking is so important to the world. So another one that I would say uh, to get involved in is something that uh, both Vivian and I are involved in, and this is the Health and Energy Platform for Action uh, that is convened by WHO, UNESA, uh, UNDP, and the World Bank. But then other stakeholders are there. And this, this is really a platform that is trying to scale up one, public responsibility and political commitment to clean cooking, so really mobilizing our political leaders around this, and also to scale up the level of financing uh, that we need in order to address this problem. So I would say go to the website, reach out, look for what we're going to be doing in that space. We're going to be launching uh, uh, the High Level Leadership Coalition at the World Health Assembly uh, next year, and uh, that's going to be a platform where leaders can really come and, and um, show and drive this, uh, drive this agenda um, and learn from each other. So that's another space to look up. Hey, wonderful, and thank you um, for bringing it all together and showing that the climate agenda and the development agenda are one and the same, really. We can't have one without the other. So with that, thank you for tuning in on Facebook. And if you want to learn more about the SDGs, you can go to sustainabledevelopment.un.org. Thank you.